It was a great night for Labour. But will it translate in the next general election? Well, one man who will play a key role for the party when the time comes is Shadow Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, Pat McFadden, who's charged with rallying the troops and activists around the country. He joins me now, already smiling. I'm guessing in terms of rallying the troops and activists, this is a morning when it doesn't need much effort for you, but how it might translate at a general election is a very different matter, isn't it? Last night was a, a fantastic result uh, and an important one. Uh, I think this was more important than a normal uh, by-election win for an opposition party because it underlined the mood for change in Scotland. And uh, it, that's really important. You know, uh, the SNP have been in government in Scotland for 16 years now. Uh, and for Labour to win such an emphatic victory uh, over the SNP in, in the by-election was a real signal of a desire for change and a fresh start from the voters of Rutherglen and Hamilton West. Uh, so we're very pleased with that, but we're also very conscious of the size of the task uh, in front of us, that uh, after the result of the last election, we've still got uh, a great deal of work to do to win the trust of the people at the next general election, and uh, that work will uh, carry on right through into our party conference, which starts this weekend. Yes, indeed. And that was a brilliant speech. But because, and, and one that, of course, you'd want to make, and no one's going to take anything away from a win, but it was a by election of particular circumstances where the incumbent had found to be breaking COVID rules. It does mean it's taken your MPs in uh, Scottish uh, members of parliament in Scotland from one to two. Still a long way to go because there are overall about 59 seats, I think. And there is a feeling now off the back of the Tory party conference and going into the Labour party conference, that Sir Keir Starmer does have to nail some colours to the mast. And what we'll be hearing from the Labour party next week to really change things? Well, the, the by-election underlines the desire for change. Uh, we had the ludicrous spectacle last week of the Conservative Prime Minister saying, we need change in the country, so stick with the government who's been making a mess of it for the last 13 years. Uh, that's not a credible proposition. Uh, and he wasn't actually offering much change either. So uh, we're grateful to Rishi Sunak for underlining the need for change. But the Labour Party is the force that can bring the change. And what you'll see at our conference uh, starting in Liverpool this weekend is us laying out what that would mean uh, in health policy, in economic policy, in housing policy, right across the piece. We've got an announcement today, for example, to address the NHS dentistry crisis, which is a real problem for many people around the country, which is really affecting children's dental health. Uh, that's the kind of policy that we'll be putting forward over the next four or five days when we gather in Liverpool. Uh, we'll come back to the dentistry policy because that's quite interesting for our, mm. our viewers because we've done a lot on the, the difficulties in trying to find NHS dentists and, and, and that's something that is very tangible with our viewers. Can I just ask you about something that came about in the Tory party conference, of course, which was the scrapping of HS2, the, the line from Birmingham up to Manchester. So Keir Starmer has sort of turned around and said he can't back a reversal of that were you to get to par power at the next general election. Your constituency is in uh, the Midlands, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, it is that's the area of the country going up towards Manchester that's going to be richly affected by the fact that this isn't happening anymore. Are you disappointed that Sir Keir Starmer won't turn around and say, do you know what, we need to reverse this, we need to stick with HS2 because it's a hugely important part of the infrastructure for the country? Well, this was a Tory fiasco. They've been in office for 13 years and over that time the cost of the project uh, have tripled. Uh, and I did think it was ironic that the Prime Minister, in, uh, in a cloak of boldness, his signal policy was to cancel something. Uh, the situation with HS2, now that he's made that announcement, uh, will be that uh, they will start to get rid of land that's been set aside for the project. Uh, they'll start to reallocate money to different projects. So uh, if and when the election comes, it won't simply be a matter of being able to say that we can uh, reverse all that. In this area, as with many others, uh, we will have to take the world that uh, is there at the general election, not necessarily the world that we'd like to be there, 
Uh, so it's very much a Tory fiasco, the cancellation of this line. Uh, but we have to respond yeah. to the decisions made by uh, taking into account what we will inherit, not what we'd okay. like to inherit. What undoubtedly you will have to deal with as well, though, is, is the Labour mayors that are further up the country, all of whom, they are, of course, the most senior elected Labour office holders in the country, Sadiq Khan, Andy Burnham, all of whom are urging um, Rishi Sunak to not scrap HS2. They can see the direct correlation between the importance of that to the communities that they lead. How are you going to sell not committing to HS2 to those local leaders that are an intrinsic part of the Labour Party? Look, I completely understand the disappointment of people at the decision Rishi Sunak uh, announced last week. Uh, and we you want could reverse a good... it. You could say you're going to reverse it. You understand that, and we're going to do everything we can when we come into power to put it back into place. But the you know, we'll have to inherit the decision uh, that, that has been taken because money will be reallocated. Will the land still be there? Uh, it's not as simple as uh, fast forwarding a year and then pressing a rewind button. Uh, the world will uh, move on quickly. Uh, and what we will have to do is ensure that we've got a good transport plan for the whole country that unlike the Conservatives, we don't have rail project after rail project, which is promised yeah. in manifesto after manifesto and is never delivered. Things are not built quickly in this country. Lessons should be learned from the fiasco of HS2 so that when we commit to a rail project or a road project, it is actually delivered. I mean, the other side of what the Prime Minister announced uh, the other day was a whole host of projects that had been announced over and over again, mm. many of which had been delayed by Rishi Sunak himself. So it yeah. wasn't really a policy for change. It was a reversal of what's there. We will have to pick that up and ensure that good transport projects for the whole country are and delivered. I think and people that's what get we want that. to do. And I think people get why you're arguing that. I just wonder if, of course, next week at the conference, they'll be asking to see more detail of what you do, as well as outlining what the Conservatives haven't gone. Uh, something that you want to uh, deal with is dentistry, yeah. NHS dentistry. You're making a commitment to provide more appointments uh, for people to be able to have NHS treatment. The challenge, though, is, is that actually the British Dental Association and, and dentists are saying that the problem is not just the appointment funding as is. It's the fact that it's not enough money. They're making a loss per appointment when they offer this to people. And the British Dental Association says 1.5 billion is needed to fix it, not the significantly smaller amount that, that you're proposing would go forward. Million. Yeah. Well, look, we, the, the problem for NHS dentistry is there for all to see. And I think you said a few minutes ago that it had been discussed on the programme quite Very a lot. So, and, yeah. uh, 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 and your viewers will be concerned about it. What we've got uh, today is a plan to fund an extra 700,000 uh, appointments, particularly in areas where there's the greatest need. And there have been real horror stories. I don't want to stop you, Mr. Brown, but I know your time is short. We could talk all day. But that, that extra, those extra 700,000 appointments are going to be funded by around 101 million, I think. That's right. And what the Dental Association says is the problem is that per unit, that is not enough. Every time they have that appointment, they're making a loss. And they need much more, 1.5 billion. So whilst the headline will make everyone's hearts leap, the reality of the figures won't. Look, everybody will always press for more resources. This is an important step in addressing the dentistry crisis that is affecting many parts of the country. What kind of country are we where people are ringing 10, 20 dentists in their area and they cannot get an appointment? Uh, this is a proposal to address that crisis directly to tackle the significant problem of uh, tooth decay among younger children. And, of course, in the longer term, and this is where uh, people are right to ask for longer term action, to address uh, reform of the NHS dental contract. Because while this will uh, go a long way to fixing the immediate problem, we recognise that in the long term, We've got to fix the NHS dental contract so that we're not just putting short-term solutions in place, but longer-term solutions. And that's exactly the kind of approach that the country okay. needs in one problem after another. Fixing that dental contract is okay. absolutely fundamental from the NHS dentists and the private dentists that we've spoken to. If you can get that fixed, there's a chance that people will be able to see an NHS dentist 
and look after their teeth better. Pat McFadden, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you.